Happy Monday, guys. It's Nate with Player Court. Today, we're talking about the weekend wrap-up and what happened in Turin, the Naito ATP Finals. We saw Alexander Zverev walk away with the trophy, defeating Daniil Medvedev in the final 6-4, 6-4, the battle of the Slenderman. Do they make him taller and skinnier in tennis? I don't know, but these two dudes move like wings in the NBA. They're gonna be around for a while. Their performance over the course of last year has been impressive to say nonetheless. Speaking of impressive are some of the things that Zverev has improved in his game to make him more competitive, namely his ability to move forward. Here we can see Medvedev pulling him in and where for a long time Zverev really struggled at the net, his volleys have improved and his first step getting to the ball or in short balls has improved as well, making him more of a threat. Now number two, the second thing that we notice that he's improved his down the line forehand, as we're gonna see here in just a moment, has become deadly. In the semifinals against Djokovic, this was the game changer. His ability to redirect down the line has really become a force to be reckoned with. And real quick, I'll show you why this, this pattern matters. So historically, not that he's been around a long time, but uh, enough that we have some data, Zverev's backhand has been one of the best in the game. And what we see is Zverev often trying to trap his opponent in these backhand rallies. Now, one of his great combinations is his ability to go cross court or down the line. And often what's he, when he, what he's doing is he's going down the line when his opponent is getting pulled to the outer thirds of the court. But what's happened, what we've seen in the past is that the player, his opponent, will often pull the ball back to the weaker side of Zverev and on his forehand. And so from this forehand exchange, especially they get stuck in the cross court rally, most of the top 10 on the opposing side have an advantage against Zverev. Well now, with this new improved forehand, that really we haven't seen a ton this year until the last, last month or so, but especially in, in, in Turin, He's keeping them honest. They can't just pull the ball cross court because of Zverev's ability to pull it down the line like we saw in the previous clip. So with that being said, the biggest improvement has been the Zverev serve. All right, we saw in, in, in 2020, the US Open final, the double faulting, right? Just really having a hard time. I mean, he, he's, he's been having issues with it, but what we're gonna see here is a different speed. All right, so we're looking at a slider out wide at you know maybe 75%. That's a first serve, a really good first serve. But he, instead of just going for the bomb, he's raising his first serve percentage by hitting spots. Now what he's also doing, and this is the big takeaway with the double faults, <laughs> really interesting enough, he's chosen between two speeds. He's looking at first gear, and he's looking at fourth gear. So what am I talking about? When Zavira was double faulting, what we found is that he was missing serves in the 115 to like the 120 range, or maybe 110 to the 120 range. It's where he was having a lot of issues with double faulting. So what he started focusing on, he's either gearing all the way down to, to, to the first gear, where he's hitting serves in, in 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 miles per hour. So as we see here, taking the speed off the serve and kicking it in. All right, and this is where we get this long point. This is where he's elected to do on some of his second serves. Just these big kickers, you know, really coming in at about 85 to, to that 95 mile per hour range. It's much, much safer. Okay, so for that particular serve, he's taking the, the, the risk out of it and just choosing to get into these 50-50 battles, meaning, you know, it's either, either, either opponent's ability to win the point, but he's fit enough and his, his strategy off the ground is good enough that he feels okay doing that. Now, on the, other, on the other side of the coin is the total opposite. He's also gearing down and opening up entirely in fourth gear where he's hitting a buck 30 on the second serve. So it's strange, right? Like 90 miles per hour to 130 miles per hour. Why do we have this differential and why is he having a hard time smack dab in the middle? Well, he's being aggressive at the, the 115 to 125, he was being aggressive, but what we saw was he was trying to hit smaller marks on the, the court, and now the 135, he's hitting bigger targets. He's going body a whole lot more. So 
he's working on accelerating. So what a lot of us find, you know, us mere mortals that play tennis, what we run into when we play is deceleration, right? We, between our first serve and second serve, the speed of the serve drops off an absolute ton. We decelerate and therefore we double fault. So he's choosing to either accelerate and go all in, or he's choosing massive, massive spin. He's not decelerating when he's hitting the 90 miles per hour. He's just choosing to put an absolute ton of spin to ensure that the ball goes in, right? So it's an interesting, an interesting, we'll let this play through. It's an interesting strategy um, that, that he's really looking at, but I think it's one that we can use in our own right, right? Either add a ton of spin to it and slow the serve down and be ready for ground and pound, or two, really accelerate. If you, if you know you have issues of trying to find you know, that, that spin, accelerate it in a big target to where you make sure that you're hitting through the ball. So big targets, meaning the body. All right, so Zverev coming up big, improving his ability to move forward on the court, improving his down the line forehand, and also improving that second serve. And then what else did we see? Well, we saw Gabine Muguruza coming through. She has now moved up from number five to number three in the WTA race, taking out Cornet in the finals. She had a wonderful tournament. She's got two Grand Slams from winning the French and then winning Wimbledon. This would be her third biggest tournament. Big things ahead for Muguruza as she looks to be in form. Um, and, and really a special moment too. This is the first time a, a Spaniard has won the, the WTA final. So congrats to her. Um, but those are our two champions, Sasha Zverev and Gabin Muguruza. Congrats to both. Guys, thank you for watching. That is the end of the year for professional tennis, but it does not necessarily mean it's the end of weekend wrap up because there's lots of news to always report. And coming soon, you know, you gotta wait till January. We'll do the year end wrap up. We'll talk about everything that happened in 2021 and what to expect in 2022. If you enjoyed today's vid, you know what to do. Sub, share, share it with someone that you think could use help with their second serve. Maybe, maybe troll your buddy, right? Like, hey, let's help you with those double faults. Or don't, I don't know, maybe you like the double fault thing because it gives you an edge. Regardless though, we have left you a treat in the comment section. If you look in the comments, we've left you a free link to check out our platform so that you can get out there and practice with friends of the same skill level in your area. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.